Well, uh, time to start. Hello, everybody. Uh, hello, everyone. And we are really happy to, to have you with us on, on board of this webinar. Um, before starting and giving the floor to, to, the, different, to the different speakers who are here today, uh, I'm going to give you some indication regarding the, the, technical, the technical points and the technical parameters, because if I don't do it, um, I will have a problem with my communication officer. Uh, first of all, I want to, to thank all the, the participants of this webinar. Uh, uh, so I want to thank Marina Gomey from WWF, uh, Pierre Vigne from Medpan, Sway Lasmi from the SPARAC, Romain Renault from the, from the Medfund, Houssin uh, Nibani from the Association Agir in Morocco, Sandro Dujnovic and Marno Milotic from Brioni National Park. Uh, we also had another speaker that was planned into the agenda, Kali de Meyer from the Bonaire Marine Park. And she was excused tonight because uh, she has a last minute uh, delay and she couldn't be here. Um, so my name is Guillaume Leport, as you can see in, uh, in, my, in my picture. I work at uh, Blue Seeds. And today with my colleague, Nastasia Femami, we are going to present you our guide that we are releasing on financing mechanism. Uh, I hope, we hope it will be helpful for you. And we hope that you will have a lot of questions in this webinar because we have a lot of, of time slot dedicated to questions. So we really hope you will have some questions. So do not hesitate to, to, to ask them. I'm gonna present you quickly the different, uh, the different technical points. Uh, the, micro, the microphones of the webinar participants will be kept off to avoid any possible disturbance that could create uh, listening problems. Once the Zoom is open, so you can click onto the interpretation globe icon and choose the language you want to, you want to listen. If you listen to English, you will uh, hear uh, all the speakers talking in their own language because we are all talking in English today. And if you want to hear it in French, you will hear our two amazing translators that will do the translation today. Um, so please click on mute original audio to hear only the interpreter uh, if you are on the French channel. You will be also able, regarding the questions, you will be able to share your questions on the chat sections. So um, if you have technical questions, you can send a direct message to uh, the person called MDB technician in private chat. And for any question or comment about the guide, uh, you can type your questions in the, in the Q and R section. Q and A section, sorry. Um, and then the idea is that we will gather the question you have on the different financing mechanism, and uh, we will ask them at the end of the presentation of each chapter of the guide. Uh, thank you very much. Um, so then I can leave the floor to, to the first speaker, Marina Gomey from the WWF that will present the MPA and TZ project in which uh, this guide is taking place. Okay, thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, so first of all, I really were uh, welcome to everyone. Uh, this is the first, uh, let's say, learning opportunity of the co-managed uh, Nothing Zone MPA project. I'm going to, okay. Uh, okay. <laughs> So I'm going to present a little bit uh, the project because I think it is interesting to frame uh, what we are doing today uh, within uh, uh, the context of a much larger and um, very ambitious initiatives that is um, happening it that has started in, um, uh, in July 2020. Um, which is the, um, the co-management no take zone MPA project. The, the, the title of the project is very long, is a uh, scaling up co-management and financially sustainable um, co-management no take zone and uh, an MPA. Uh, because the, the partners, the 16 partners that are working together aim in the long term to rebuild the Mediterranean fish biomass and protect key habitats through a number of uh, different uh, initiatives at different level. So first of all, we want to make a difference in the field. And the project actually is uh, seeing different partners working in uh, 29 project sites in 10 countries um, 
uh, with aim by, uh, of creating uh, no take zones, so areas with a strong uh, protection, and also to improve the management of existing marine protected areas. Um, to rebuild the fish biomass and to protect uh, key habitats. And how we are doing this by engaging the stakeholders at the different level and especially the small scale fishers that are the ones that should protect and are, are more interested to protect their territory uh, to uh, see uh, benefits in the long term. But this is not enough because the Mediterranean is very large. So we are working together also to scale up at the different level by building the capacity of the different stakeholders and the different partners and the different people that are working in the field. Um, also by doing this uh, first webinar together, unfortunately online, but we hope in the future also with physical meetings but also by exchanging, exchanging knowledge and to promote networking uh, around the Mediterranean by bringing together different uh, stakeholders that together can make the difference. And also by increasing the financial sustainabilities of those initiatives, because we do want to maintain and see the results also in the long term. And then as a, let's say as a, a third and more general uh, framework, we want also to empower future by working and by pushing decision makers to replicate and to sustain those uh, local solutions by developing ambitious and effective uh, policy tools, policy plan to protect the Mediterranean. Of course, this is within the context of the Barcelona Convention. So here you see uh, the list of the different partners. Uh, we have direct, indirect, and associated partners. And we hope to share uh, the results uh, soon. And I really uh, welcome to everyone uh, to um, enjoy the, uh, the, the webinar, and especially to be proactive and to pose a lot of questions to the speakers. Thank you. Thank you very much, Marina. And then we can move directly to the second section of the of the introduction. Um, so, Pierre, I'm leaving you the I'm leaving you the floor. Pierre, your microphone is off. Sorry, I just check if I have the control of the PowerPoint to move on. Yes. So good morning, everybody. Uh, my name is Pierre Vigne and I work for the Secretariat of uh, MedPan, which is the network of uh, MPA managers in the Mediterranean. And this morning I am in charge together with my colleagues who are Helasmi from the SPARAC, which uh, most of you know is uh, the Regional Activity Center for Specially Protected Areas, which is an implementation instrument of the Barcelona Convention. So together we are in charge this morning of giving you a quick overview of the situation of uh, Mediterranean MPAs at the regional level, of their challenges and how these challenges uh, translate into financial terms, as well as to provide you with uh, some, share with you some key recommendations to move forward. So this map takes stock of the Mediterranean MPA system in terms of coverage. It is using the latest data from uh, MapAMED, that is the GIS database that MedPan and Sparac are developing and maintaining uh, together. So this new edition of MapAMED is, uh, as it says, like here, is currently being validated, but the orders of magnitude that are indicated are, are correct. So the um, 1,137 MPAs that are identified across the basin, including MPAs of national status, natural 2000, 2000 sites, the Pelagos Sanctuary, cover altogether 8.3% of the Mediterranean. So if we stick to the, this figure of overall coverage, we could say that we are not very far from the 10% target that is set by the Aishi. Uh, considering also that uh, only MPAs on this map are considered, not the um, other effective rebased conservation measures, which, as you know, are taken into account in the IEC target. 
However, um, as it's very obvious here, if you take a closer look at the map, the situation across the basin is uh, highly contrasted. Since 97% of the MPAs are located, are located in the uh, EU waters and are mainly covering coastal and shallow waters. Um, it should also be noted that mm, the very large Pelagos sanctuary uh, between uh, France, Monaco and Italy, as well as the Spanish migratory corridor for cetaceans, uh, well, you cannot miss them on the map, uh, together account for more than half of the total MPA coverage here. Also, fully and strongly protected areas, well, which that is to say, no take, no fishing, no go zones. And as, as Marina reminded, this is, of, of course, one falls in the scope of the project, um, are only covering um, 0.06% of the total um, uh, MED, which is obviously very little considering the importance of these zones for the conservation, but also for the recovery of the fish stocks. So considering the Aishi objective that is also recalled here on this slide, we can see that we are still quite far from the mark, let's say, in terms of ecological representativeness and connectivity for MPA system in the MED. Uh, but what about MPA management? Well, we all know that MPAs must be managed effectively if we want that they reach their conservation objectives and deliver the um, ecological benefits that are expected and beyond these ecological benefits also produce social and economic benefits. So here we are not measuring uh, management effectiveness, but rather the management effort. That is to say, um, the means that MPA have to fulfill their missions. So here we present some data that are collected by questionnaire from a good sample of 254 Mediterranean MPAs. And that will uh, be give like all the analyses will be um, later on this year published uh, by Medpan and the Sparak within the uh, 2020 status of Mediterranean MPAs. But essentially, it is to uh, show that still very important gaps remains when we are talking about management in terms of human resources, equipment, infrastructure. As you can see here, only 15% of MPAs say they have sufficient uh, human resources. And well, at the other end of the spectrum, 11% have no dedicated staff still. Um, there are gaps in terms of monitoring and, uh, and um, um, also on, sorry, surveillance and uh, enforcement of regulations. So we know that this is a recurring problem, uh, which overlaps with many other, with a lot of issues, such as like issues of legal institutional framework, operational coordination of police at sea, powers of intervention for um, the um, and fining for the MPA uh, rangers. Um, that is about the commitment of prosecutors, and also it also relates to the previous point that is about ensuring presence in the field, of course. We know that there is also a lack of uh, management plan and of monitoring data. Here we can see that like um, altogether only 30% of the respondents say um, among MPAs that they have a management plan that is uh, implemented, that sorry, 30% of MPAs do not have uh, a management plan implemented still. And so more particularly in relation to the subject of this uh, webinar, of course, a lack of sustainable financing and business planning so on the second point, we see here that uh, only 20% of MPAs that are surveyed have developed a business plan so far. Um, and as for the lack of sustainable financing, I will uh, hand over to my colleague Suhei, uh, as she will give you an overview of um, well, these gaps that we just highlighted and how they translate into financial gaps. Thank so you. Thank you. Please. Thank you, Pierre. And Sue and Romain, if you can, if you can be really quick, because... Uh, yes, thank you, yeah, Pierre. Thanks, Thank you, Pierre. So uh, in 2015, uh, Sparag, Medvan, and WWF uh, have had the good idea to undertake a first assessment uh, of financing needs for effective management of MBAs in the Med. Uh, the main findings were that only 8% of MBA financing needs are covered by current resources. And the financing gap uh, was uh, amounted to uh, 700 million euros per year for the management of 
existing MPAs only, and of 7 billion euros to meet, to meet the AC targets. I will let you calculate the gap for the prospective 30 by 30 target. Uh, another key finding was that the current level of MPA underfunding are at risk of worsening, mainly because pioneer young MPAs have less resources and present a lower diversity of financial sources. It was also found that the international cooperation is a key for developing MPA financing and that international financial resources usually triggered national strategies and actions for MPAs. On the other hand, national budgets provide the core operational funding, which is very important. So the take home recommendation from the study was that the possible solution relies really the diversity and complementarity between national resources, local and innovative mechanisms, and also regional cooperation. Next, please. Uh, so, um, with regard to AISHI Target 11, and as you know, the regional MPA community gathered in 2012 uh, 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 at the first Mediterranean MPA Forum, uh, has developed a roadmap. Uh, this roadmap has also inspired a sister roadmap that was adopted by the Mediterranean states, parties to the Barcelona Convention in 2016. So both roadmaps have an objective number four, aiming at ensuring financial uh, sustainability of MPAs. So both roadmaps have recommended to first, develop opportunities for the diversification of funding sources through sustainable and innovative financing mechanisms. Uh, secondly, to review legal and institutional frameworks accordingly. And third, to build national capacities in sustainable financing mechanisms, fundraising and business planning, and also management performance. So as a result, national and international stakeholders have become aware of the importance of systematic planning uh, and also uh, for MPAs and national MPA system. The other key achievement for the region was the setting up of a conservation fund known as the MET Fund, for Mediterranean MPAs. And we will invite uh, Romain Renou uh, from the Med Fund to brief you uh, just after I finished my, my next slide. Next, please. <laughs> so the regional MPA community uh, under the lead of the Med Funds, Barak and WWF are preparing a post-2020 MPA roadmap that will be finalized during the 2020 MPA forum that for obvious reason was postponed to late 21 or early 22. So in the process of preparing the new roadmap, an online consultation process was initiated since October 20, uh, starting by a, an online survey to identify limiting factors hindering the region from achieving the MPA targets. So according to the 363 respondents from 21 countries, the most important limiting factors concerning sustainable financing were, uh, were like first, a lack of dedicated long-term national funds. This is very important. And also the lack of systematic business planning for MPA systems. And also the lack of local sustainable financing mechanisms for the benefit of MPAs, uh, and local communities, like, for example, I don't know, labeling, eco mooring, and many other mechanisms. And also an increase, uh, increasing de uh, dependence, we could call it like on project based funding. Thank you very much. Romain Renou, you have the floor. Thank you, Sua. Thank you very much, uh, Sua. Uh, good morning, and thank you for, for having us. Uh, to this webinar, how to finance marine protected areas, uh, because actually this is uh, what we have been doing in the past uh, five years. Uh, just to tell you, just to tell you that the Med Fund is not a project; uh, is a conservation trust fund that has been designed, I should say, that has been custom made uh, 
uh, for these purposes of sustainable financing of Mediterranean protected areas. So it is a Monaco-based organization. It has been initiated by France, Monaco, and Tunisia with the support of the Prince Albert II of Monaco Foundation. And it is gathering uh, many different Mediterranean countries and key regional partners, such as, of course, Medpan, Raxpa, that are, that are part of the, of the board of directors. You can move to the next one. So how does it work and uh, uh, how that the MED fund generates uh, funding? Uh, the objective of the MED fund is to capitalize by 2025, 30 million euro and invest this uh, substantial sum on financial markets uh, following a responsible investment policy. And the regular profits uh, that will be made through this investment uh, will be reinvested in uh, strengthening uh, uh, MPAs. So we will launch, actually we have been launching already two call for interest or one, one call uh, annually. Um, and application from Mediterranean MPAs are reviewed by a grant award committee. And to date, we have already granted uh, more than uh, 3,000 square kilometers of protected areas. So it's around 2.8 million euros that have been committed for the next five years for eight marine protected areas in Tunisia, Albania, Morocco, and Turkey. And what do we find if you go to the next one, Pierre, which is my final slide, is that we are focusing our funding on the day-to-day -day operational cost of marine protected areas, which mean uh, the implementation of the management plan. So we are funding activities such as good and shared governance with civil society. We are also funding the human resources on the field. Uh, uh, we are also funding equipment and scientific monitoring. Uh, we promote a high level of surveillance by funding, just to say, gas and fuel in the boats. And we also promote environmental education and support sustainable activities. If you want to know more about the Med Fund, just visit the website or contact us, and I will be pleased to share with you more, more detail. Thanks again. Thank you very much, Romain, uh, for this presentation. Uh, Pierre, if you can go really quick on the last slide because you already doubled your, your speaking time, I'm sorry, but the schedule is tight. Thank you very much, Pierre. Sorry, sorry. Uh, yes, we will end in a few words just to share with you also uh, initiatives that we are leading at Pansparak together with other partners at our regional level. And it's more about um, um, building capacity and providing MPAs with technical support. So here I will just say a word about the regular training program of the MedPan network that we are gradually implementing and which complements a uh, range of tools that we already have in terms of capacity building. Uh, so it's mainly to stress that this program is intended to provide MPAs with uh, operational responses while basing on um, clearly identified needs. It, it is about um, uh, providing MPAs with uh, skills that they can put in practice uh, at the end of the training that it's currently focuses on several thematic areas and of course financing is one of them with uh, the aim to uh, provide the MPAs with a learning path in each topic uh, through a series of training modules that uh, complement each other. Another challenge here is the, the, the regularity uh, as a need identified are often recurrent and potentially concern many MPAs um, uh, across the basin. The training courses are repeated over time. Uh, the program is gradually implemented in several host MPAs around the basin that you can see here. These are these white uh, dots, uh, which thus act as training centers, um, both from a logistical, but also technical and pedagogical uh, point of view. And finally, we are seeking to develop this program in partnership approach, which means uh, in synergy with all the partners that are also offering training courses uh, with, uh, as we hope at some point, uh, being able to display and coordinate together a common catalog of training courses for MPAs. So just about financing, we have developed with the Brienne National Park and Blue Seeds a first training module on business planning, which is um, well, which was held online in the current circumstances, but that will be repeated over time. I won't go into the details here because uh, I, I, I know that Guillaume will also uh, come back on this in his presentation. 
Um, just to mention that this training will um, soon be complete, completed with other modules on financing um, and that their approach objectives will be defined together with uh, the support of the thematic working group on financing that we have set up within MedPan to provide uh, beyond training technical support and uh, strategic support also to the different activities that the network is developing and implementing. So the guide that uh, will be presented uh, today that was developed by Blue Seeds um, will be a valuable resource, I am sure, uh, for future training on uh, self-financing. Well, thank you very much, and I, I leave the end to my colleagues Sue. Thank you, Pierre. Yes, thank you. To, to conclude this presentation, thank you, Guillaume. I'm pleased to let you know that SPARAC is also contributing to this regional endeavors, mm -hmm. and uh, mainly through supporting some countries' uh, authorities and elaborating MPA financial strategies and business plans. Uh, the map here shows uh, in, uh, in white dots the MPAs that already received support and uh, in orange the MPAs that are planned to receive such support. Uh, discussions are ongoing with two other countries to receive such kind of technical uh, support. As a lesson learned from previous experiences uh, and in the planned activities, business planning will go in parallel with uh, the management planning processes so that the results are coherent and integrated between the management plan and business plan. Uh, SPARAC is also, just to finish, endeavoring to uh, develop a comprehensive capacity building program to improve MPA management. And this program includes also aspects of sustainability, including financial sustainability. I will stop it here and thanks very much for your kind attention. Thank you. Thank you, Sue. Thank you all. Um, thank you for this, this, um, this, this detailed uh, introduction. It's perfect to well introduce the guide. Uh, I would like to take this opportunity to thank all of you, Marina, for the coordination of the MPA NTZ project, which is uh, a project with a lot of partners, so it's not an easy task to, co to coordinate it. So thank you very much. Uh, Pierre and Sue, thank you for uh, all our project together with the SPARAC and the MedPan here at Blue Seeds. And Romain, it was really most appreciated to have you on board today and have the presentation of the MedFun. And I hope we will have opportunities to collaborate because there are a lot of similarities between our two approaches. So thank you very much, all. So now we're gonna we're gonna dive in the, into this guide. So what is our approach here at BlueSeed? As uh, Pierre and Sua and Roma mentioned, uh, there are still a lot of problems in terms of financing marine conservation here in the Mediterranean Sea. It's it's true for other parts in the world of the world. Sorry, um, and there are no magical solution to reduce the financing gap of marine conservation but it is more about a complementary approach with different solutions at the national level, at the regional level, and at the local level. And what we want to do with this guide is to give our little, our, our little contribution to the, to the big puzzle. And we are focusing on financing mechanism that can be practically implemented by uh, MPA managers. So that's why we, that's what we are going to present you today. So, if you are an MPA manager or anybody working on marine, on marine conservation activities into MPAs or any stakeholders working in on, or around MPA, uh, this guide was meant for you. And we share again the link for the guide into the, into the chat section if you want to download it and share it with anybody who wants to know about more about it. Uh, okay. So yes, I, I'm not a, an expert of, of, of networking, but my communication officer Ask me to, to do it, so I have to do it. Uh, if you want us to talk about your participation, please uh, share with us in the in the chat session uh, your different uh, your different name in the social networks. And if you want to talk about the webinar and talk about blue seeds, feel free to do it. Okay, I, I did my job. So basically, what we're going to do today, we were planning first on. Uh, showing you in detail uh, what the financing mechanism were about and what was the process to implement it. But as you will see in the guide, it's a big, uh, it's a big work and we won't have time here to, to detail all the financing mechanism. So the idea is more uh, to give you uh, the will to, to, to download the guide and to use it. So it we will focus more on the on the main part that you will find in the guide and on the case study that are illustrating the guide. So 
basically the guide is divided into four uh, four chapters. The first one on financial strategy and business planning for MPAs, which which are prerequisites to implement financing mechanism, of course. But this is something that we don't find into uh, all MPAs. Then uh, will my colleague Nastasia uh, will introduce you to two. Uh, self-financing mechanism that MPA managers could implement, which are the visitor fees and the concession fees. And finally, we are going to talk about an innovative uh, financing approach for MPA linked to uh, the transformation of fisheries, which is the revolving fund that has been developed in Morocco by uh, the association, the association Asia. Okay. Nastasia, I can leave you the floor now. Thank you, Guillaume. So, thank you very much, Guillaume, and hello, everyone. Uh, I'm just checking if I have the control of uh, the slides. Yes, great. So um, how does the guide work? <clears throat> Sorry. So for each mechanism, we describe its implementation process through a step-by-step -step methodology. So it's pretty simple. So uh, the implementation process is thus divided into several steps. And for each step, you have the expected goal and the expected output. Each step is composed of one or more actions to be undertaken to reach the side goal. You will also find boxes <clears throat> that give concrete examples. And you will also find some recommendations and focal points in the bulb section. Finally, for each mechanism, you have a toolbox uh, listing the possible issues that could arise throughout the implementation process. And for each possible issue, we propose possible solutions uh, that could be implemented. So we really try to make this guide as practical as possible, and we really hope that it can guide you uh, in the implementation of the mechanism that we're going to present you today. Thank you, Guillaume. Guillaume, your microphone is off. That could be good. Um, so I'm going to um, take you through the first chapter of the guide, which is related to financial strategy and business planning for MPAs. Um, practically speaking, in terms of uh, addressing your questions, uh, because we don't have much time, we will focus uh, your questions uh, after the chapters on concession fees and visitor fees, and also after the chapter on revolving fund. But if you have any question on the financial strategy and the business plan, you can ask it also in the chat and we will answer you uh, individually after the, after the, the, the webinar in two, by emails. So uh, the first chapter is about financial strategy. Uh, Marco, can I have the slide, please? Thank you. Um, so as Natasia said, for each chapter, we try to show a really practical approach, a step-by-step -step approach to develop each of the mechanism. And it's the same for the financial strategy and for the business plan. So schematically, how does this process work? What will you find in the guide? You can divide um, the approach for developing your financial strategy into two main uh, group of steps. So the first step, next slide, please. Thanks. So the first step is about the business plan itself, uh, which is a process that will lead you to identify your financing gap. The financing gap being, be, being basically the difference between uh, all your needs in terms of finance that you will have to cover all your conservation activities and your expected uh, revenues. Once you have done your business plan and you've identified your financing gap, you can move to the second part of the financial, financial strategy, which is the financial strategy itself. Uh, next slide, please. And um, in this, uh, in this second, second phase, the idea is now that me as an MPA manager, I have identified my financing gap thanks to the business plan, what are my options, what are the paths I could follow in order to reduce this financing gap. So the guide will provide you uh, tips and advices and feedback from the, from the field uh, to show you different strategy to help you in reducing your financing gap. And of course, 
finding new uh, new sources of funding, such as the financing mechanism that we will present to you in the guide, uh, is part of a financial strategy for MPAs. So that's why we talk about first in this guide about financial strategy and business planning. Uh, so basically, what will you find in the guide? So you will find a step-by-step -step methodology to develop both your business plan and your financial strategy as an MPA. You will also find um, what we call the MedPlan tool. So basically, it's, a, it's, a, it's an Excel file, an Excel Canva that you can use to develop your business plan. You can find a link in the guide to download the MedPlan tool uh, on the Sparac, Sparac website or on the MedPlan website. Um, and apart from uh, the guide, you can find additional information regarding uh, your MPI business plan or your MPI financial strategy uh, through other support, such uh, as the ones that Pierre talked about, which are uh, the, training, the training module developed uh, into the training centers of MedPon. Uh, at the beginning of 2021, uh, we developed at Blue with MedPon and Brioni National Park some uh, training module on business planning. And the resources that we used for uh, this training module will be soon available online. And there will also be, as Pierre mentioned, uh, other training module that will be developed soon. So stay tuned if you want to, if you want to know more about that. And finally, before uh, leaving the floor to Nastasia to introduce you to the first mechanism that you will find in the guide, um, I want to remind you why we we thought it, it was a good idea and an important uh, thing, thing to present the financial strategy and the business plan at the beginning of the guide. It's exactly because all the financing mechanism that we, you will find in this guide and also the other financing approach that you could have in your MPAs are all part of your overall financial strategy. Basically, you need to have a clear understanding of your cost and of your financing gap to choose the best suited financing mechanism to implement uh, to implement in your MPA, and uh, the financing mechanism, the three financing mechanism that you will find in this guide, are a big part of your financial strategy. So now I'm going to leave the floor to Nastasia, who will talk to you about the first uh, financing mechanism, which are the visitor fees. Thank you very much, Guillaume. Uh, I don't think I have the control of the slides. Yes, now I think I have it. Just let me check. Yes, great. Thank you very much, Guillaume. So I will quickly present the visitor fee mechanism. Um, unfortunately, Kali de Meyer couldn't join us today, but please um, go read the, um, the case study on Bonaire in your guide and feel free to ask any question. It will be a pleasure to, to answer. So the visitor fees are one of the two self-financing uh, mechanisms presented in this guide. As a reminder, uh, self-financing mechanisms are the mechanisms that allow MPAs to finance their costs from their own resources. So visitor fees, uh, also called user fees or entry fees, entrance fees, are the fees charged to uh, the visitors of an MPA, uh, either directly by the MPA services or indirectly by third parties like tour operators. So what are the prerequisites to implement visitor fees? Of course, only MPAs with uh, site visits can implement uh, visitor fees to generate revenue. And with over 300 million tourists visiting the Mediterranean region every year, we consider that this mechanism was particularly uh, adapted to Mediterranean MPAs. So of course, those numbers and recommendations must be considered outside of the COVID-19 uh, pandemic which we all know uh, strongly is strongly impacting the tourism industry. Uh, and you must also, of course, have the legal permission to implement uh, visitor fees. So what are the opportunities now for MPAs to implement visitor fees? First, it is relatively easy to implement. And second, it is a great way to involve the public in conservation and thus create awareness. In practice, uh, setting up visitor fees consists of eight steps, and each step is detailed in the guide where you will find concrete actions to undertake to implement the mechanism. For example, you will find recommendations on how to estimate uh, an adequate fee level based on a willingness to pay survey, for example. 
You also find recommendations on how to structure your collection process uh, to reduce cost and also to foster self-compliance. Um, and usually it is recommended to, uh, it is particularly recommended to use an online payment tools uh, that can facilitate the collection process as those tools can, uh, are, are, are usually easy to manage and implement. So some, some example of uh, online payment tools could be the Reef Support tool, uh, which is the one used in Bonaire, and the bloomring.org tool to collect marine fees. You will, of course, find uh, all the details you need uh, in the guide. Um, and as I said, yes, unfortunately, uh, Kelly is not here. But basically, we in the guide, we present the Bonaire case study, which is a good example of visit, uh, successful uh, visitor fee uh, mechanism. So they implemented for the first time in 1992, and uh, the generated revenues are enough to cover the management cost of the park. But please feel free to, to read the case study in the guide and ask us a question in the Q&A uh, section. So now I'm going to present you the um, second self-financing mechanisms uh, presented in this guide, which is the concession fee mechanism. And then I'll let Marno Milotic, general manager of the Bruni National Park, and Sandro Dzhmovic, uh, conservation manager of the Bruni National Park, talk about the concession system in place in Bruni in Croatia. So the concession fees are uh, another self-financing mechanism. But what is a concession? Concretely, a concession is a contract made between a concession authority, which is the concession that has uh, the competence uh, to award concessions, and a private operator, the concessionaire. Through this concession agreement, the concessionaire um, is allowed to uh, carry out its activity within the MPA. Uh, subject to compliance with environmental manager, environmental um, regulations, sorry, and in exchange uh, for a concession fee. So fee revenues would then allow MPA managers to invest in conservation. Concessions are commonly used for recreational activities like boat excursions, kayaking or kayak rental, uh, diving, and can in this, in this respect be a great mean of engaging small businesses and local communities in conservation. So what are the prerequisites for implementing a concession? The most imp important, of course, you must, you must have the legal permission to develop uh, concessions within the MPA. And you must identify the concession authority if uh, this one is different from the MPA authority. Then you must have the technical capacities of find assistance to identify uh, the um, concession opportunities, but also to negotiate the concession contracts and uh, to set up adequate concession fees. Um, concession can offer a wide range of uh, benefits to MPA. For example, it can generate addi additional and stable revenues. Uh, it allows managers to focus on the core functions, which is uh, conservation activities. It provides an extra presence within the MPA uh, that can help to reduce harmful and illegal behaviors. And uh, it can promote sustainable commercial activities and is in this respect a great mean uh, as well to engage the private sector in conservation. So setting up concession mechanism consists of six steps. Uh, concessions are slightly more complex to implement than visitor fees. So we really try to give only uh, useful and practical information for its implementation. For example, you'll find information on how to identify relevant uh, concession activities as concession activities, activities need to be economically viable but they also must not have adverse impact on the environment that the MPA aims to protect. So you will find recommendation in the guide on how to select the relevant activities and on how to assess their potential impact on the environment in order to be able to, um, to anticipate them, avoid them or mitigate them during the planning phase. Uh, we also present the different types of concessions and fees that you could use according to your concession project. 
And uh, we also explain how to use the concession contract to safeguard, this, to safeguard the success of uh, your concession mechanism and uh, to safeguard the environmental sustainability of the concession that has been awarded. So thank you very much. Now, uh, Marno, uh, the floor is yours. Thank you. Okay, let me just check if I have the controls. Okay. Yeah, here we go. Oh, sorry. Yeah. Thank you. Okay. Uh, I will speak to you a little bit about uh, the financial management in the Brioni National Park. Uh, well, uh, as you can see on the slide, uh, the Brioni became an MPA in 1983. Uh, we are situated on the north part of the Adriatic Sea, and uh, MPA uh, consists of 14 islands and the surrounding area uh, of the sea. Total area of the park is 3,395 hectares, which uh, of that area, 80% of the area is a sea area. We are 100% owned by the state and there is no inhabitants on the island uh, since uh, 1961. In that time, they were all transferred and inhabited at the mainland. Main users of the MPA are tourists and local community, but uh, there is still in part present on the island an army base who serves as a protection for the president and the government of the Republic of Croatia, since one part of the island uh, with three villas and two islands with two more villas on them is still the residential summer vacation villas for the protocolar needs uh, of the government and the president of the state. The MPA has 160 to 180,000 visitors annually, around 230 permanent and about 60 to 80 seasonal employees, uh, which generates about uh, generates an expense about 300 to 400,000 euros per month in salary expenses. MPA has been financially sustainable in a way that it's self-reliant, solely based on its own income since 2015. Uh, since it is a state-owned public institution, uh, the state serves as a backup mechanism in case anything goes wrong. For example, lower incomes from tourism department or something like that, like the coronavirus spread and so on then the state can fund, uh, can fund the part that is missing in the budget. Uh, MPA has direct collection of the fee revenues, which includes entrance fee, income from the hotel and restaurant business, uh, fee from the boats who enter the MPA, organization of the weddings and team buildings inside the, the protected areas, donation from private donors and companies, and of course the concession fees. Now, uh, the income of the concession fees is not the primer, it's not even the biggest income, as you can see from the pie chart, uh, uh, which is the concession uh, fee is the black line, and it's around 173,000 euros per year. But for the MPA, it is the substantial amount. And the best benefit is that it resolves some of the problems that the MPA cannot successfully solve by itself. Then this uh, partnership uh, with the private company contractors uh, comes in as a great intermediate between the MPA and the volatile demands of the fast changing market. Other main incomes is the entrance fee tickets to the MPA, which is in the chart stated as the black, uh, dark blue. Uh, it is about 2.6 million euros. Then the income from the hotels and the restaurant business, 
which is uh, in the chart as a light blue. You see it's the biggest amount, uh, almost 4.8 million euros. Um, and income from the donation can vary from year to year, but let's say it's from 50 to 150,000 euros per year. Uh, it is a very small blue line after that. And then all the other incomes uh, in total, uh, about 800 and 840,000 euros per year, which is this light uh, whitish uh, part of the chart. Concession fees and concession program consist mainly of touristic activities that are very volatile uh, and that the MPA cannot handle by itself. Uh, because, why? Because of the lack of the employees for, for specific authority, uh, for specific activity, too many expenses, uh, not too much profit in, in, in some of the departments, uh, problems with fast, volatile, changing prices uh, in some areas, etc. Uh, those activities uh, in our part include diving and kayaking, golf, which we uh, have on the island, and it's a, uh, it's a historical golf one of the first in Europe with sand pits and we promote it as an ecological golf course because we don't add any watering, any uh, pesticide or whatever. It's natu natural golf course. course. Uh, then souvenir shops, uh, coffee bar, outside theater and cinema for summer use of acting troops and theater people. And all of this, of course, uh, it's mainly used in the summertime during the, the, the main activities of the MPA. Benefits are unsteady income revenues for the MPA to be used as an income for the expenses in, in the conservation measures throughout the park, uh, as opposed to constant decline in the revenues of those activities in the past where the expenses were greater than the incomes. MPA gives short-term duration concession up to five years. Usually we give three years concessions, which allows great adaptation and monitoring of the process. Now, the mechanism allows better management of activities that are not business oriented and dependent on the side market. Main, challenge, main challenges in, in concessions fees program are always the elaboration of the concession agreement, uh, which is hard at first, but then it's, it gets pretty easy to maintain in the future. It is just uh, a smaller adjustment every time the next concession is given after three or five years. And of course, the monitoring and controlling part to see that the agreements are being respected. If not, the contracts are immediately terminated and the concessionaire is charged with the damages to the MPA. So this could be a really, really good uh, mechanism to control uh, the area and control the partners. Uh, well, this is all for my short presentation. I guess question and answers will be later. Yeah, we will have question right now, Mano. Thank you, thank you very much for your for your presentation. It was really clear, and I hope it gives people the the will of of looking deeper at your case study into into the guide. Um, so we received a lot of questions, so we will have 10, 10 minutes to to answer it. So Nastasia and Marno, you will be the the main uh, the main people I will ask the question to. Um, Basically, we have three main categories of questions, at least three different group of questions that 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 can be that can be highlighted related to the to the legislation, uh, the difference between mandatory and voluntary, also related to the to the uh, to the implication of the local communities and the impact and the, how to involve local communities into the into the mechanism, and also related to the to the to the financing aspect. But before uh, Going a little deeper into those questions, I will answer directly a quick question that uh, some of you asked related to the, the, the financial strategy and the business planning uh, training module that me and Pierre talked about. Uh, people who asked who you should uh, 
uh, ask to participate into those kind of, of, uh, of training modules. And you can address your question directly to Blue Seeds, to us, and to and to Metan. And when there will be next uh, training sessions, uh, you will receive an email through the Metan mailing list. Um, so yes, first, first question for you, Nastasia and Marno. Um, there is a question about the about the local com two different questions, but they are uh, both related to the local communities' implications. So the first one is uh, how to make sure that uh, the concessions won't have uh, won't have a negative impact on the local community by maybe uh, preventing them from from having an access to uh, to the to the to the local resources and also how to how to develop this kind of concession and this kind of mechanism by uh, including the including the local communities into into them well um uh, we had great experience about that, actually, because uh, the local community has uh, accepted the, the over the years, of course, it, it takes some time, but usually they, they find the interest, the financial interest in doing business with the national park, because as a protected area, uh, you always have some kind of attraction in the MPA, MPA which uh, our local community, of course, uh, ready to explore and, of course, uh, finance themselves from that part. And you, as the MPA, of course, are not always able uh, to, you're not always able to have uh, the people educated for that part, or you cannot adapt uh, accordingly this fast of changing the requests of the, of the tourists and their uh, what they want to do and what they want to see and everything. So if, you, if you're not able to do it by yourself as an MPA, if you're not able to, to have enough people or, or the financial uh, part of it, then you allow, you allow, of course, you have to, uh, you have to set the guidelines and see um, what, are, what area is allowed to visit, uh, what, is, what is going to be the restricted number of people and everything you put it into a, an agreement and into a program. And then you, you have to communicate with the, with the locals to see if they have any interest in doing that part for you, of course, for, for a reasonable concession fee. And then you have to monitor that part. We, uh, as a Briuni, uh, usually, had very very good response from from the local community and they are always interesting uh, interested in in uh, collaboration with the national park and they are looking and they even suggest some of their ideas to be implemented inside the park of course some of these ideas are not in the interest of the mpa so we don't allow it but if they have a good uh, a good idea we try to uh, implement it and then to work it into a program and give it as a new concession program. Thank you, Marno. I don't know if you want to add something, Nastasia, to, to that. Oh, I think Marno said everything. Thank you, yeah, Marno. Yeah. Very clear. Yes. Yeah, Marno, you said something interest, interested. You talked about concession agreement. And this was uh, this was also a question that, that, that popped up by some of the, of the participants. Um, because some, when we are talking about concession agreements, uh, this could be legally speaking agreements that are uh, that are heavy in terms of process of implementation. Uh, and some okay. MPAs are wondering what uh, if they don't have the skills internally in the MPA to develop such uh, such uh, such approach such such agreements. What are the opportunities? Maybe Anastasia, you can say a few words about the, the legal aspects and how to make sure that the agreement will be will be as robust as possible? From a theoretical point of view, yes, the concession agreement is very important, of course. Um, and we recommend to, um, to ask a lawyer to assist you, to a lawyer or at least someone who has a good understanding of the national legislation and uh, like someone that someone who can uh, negotiate the provisions uh, with you to to make sure that the concession contract 
can ensure the sustainability of the concession, but also to ensure you um, um, an adequate concession fee. So Marno, if you want to, to add something. Yeah. Well, I, I, I just wanted to say that, uh, um, for example, in Croatia, this part, uh, well, works that we as an MPA, develop a program because as an MPA, uh, well, you have the best knowledge of your expert inside the MPA of, uh, of the, the, the area park and which area uh, you want to explore and make available to tourists and which area you want to restrict and it's, it's not available to, to, to the public. So you as an MPA are, are are in a way the best uh, uh, people to do this kind of program. And then we in Croatia present this as an annual program, as an MPA to the, to the ministry. And then the ministry gives approval for this type of program. And then we decide if we, we want as an MPA to do this program ourselves, if we have the staff, the time, the money or not. And then if not, we give it this program outside for a public concession. So anyone can apply to the concession and we pick up the, the best contractor, which give us the most money and will respect the guidelines that we stated in, in the public announcement. So. Okay, thank you. Thank you very much, Marno. I think it's, it's pretty clear. Uh, I will jump into... Just to add yeah, something to what Mara just said, um, we, you, you can have a look also at the guide and we present all the awarding process that you could use. Uh, but of course, uh, of course, as Marno uh, said, um, sometimes the awarding process uh, is quite strict <laughs> and uh, mandatory according to the national legislation. But um, you can have a look at the different options that you have, and still, uh, it's it's still necessary to to proceed with the legal assessment to make sure that you are uh, on the good track. And yeah, I will jump on a, a term that you both used, and that uh, that popped up also in the question. You used the term mandatory, and some people were wondering uh, if the because we are talking about mandatory fee, but if it's not possible to implement mandatory fee, uh, what about voluntary fee? Is it an option? Is it possible to implement it if you don't have the, in terms of legislation, if you don't have the right as an MPA to, to collect some kind of mandatory fees? Yes, sometimes it can be uh, difficult for MPA managers to implement a mandatory fee um, visitor fees or entrance fees or, or whatever the, the, or you call uh, this kind of fees. Uh, but an option is to implement optional uh, visitor fees or user fees. Um, and it can still be a significant uh, source of revenues. So um, yes, there is still an option. And if, it's, if it works well, uh, maybe it can be, um, it can enhance a change in legislation uh, or at least in local uh, legislation, if it's possible in your country. May I add something? Just a little bit. Uh, well, um, uh, according to this visitor visitor fees, uh, well, they can be a really, really good uh, management uh, practice, practice for some area. I know that sometimes uh, to implement this in the beginning, can, can have some kind of negative impact, but it's, I think it's a very, very short time because this all needs to be communicated widely with the local community in a way, uh, for example, as it is in Croatia, we have entrance fees almost to all MPAs. Some of them doesn't have because they are very, very, they are very secluded and not very popular but uh, most of the MPAs has entrance fees. And what we learned from that is that uh, the people consider this entrance fees as a type of, not, not a tax that they pay because they are not or, or they are allowed to enter, but they consider it as a donation to the park for, for sustainable management. So they realize that they have to pay something to help the park 
maintain the area as it is. And most people see it in a positive uh, way. Of course, you will balance this with the price of the entrance fee. Because if you set a very low price, you probably won't have uh, any, uh, well, negative impact, of course. But and, and then after a while and after a few years, you can change it and you can go up with the price and so on. The price is also very good because uh, this limits the amount of people. Uh, not only you can you can limit the amount of people going into the park. Not only by 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 counting the people going in and say okay i will sell 200 tickets per, per day and not a one more but you can also restrict restricted by the price as an entrance fee to the park for example we have a big problem in croatia with plitvice lakes national park because too many people are coming in and so they they try to limit the amount of people uh, but by turning away the agencies uh, in, a, in a very high prices rate. So this can be also uh, a, a management activity, uh, how to um, uh, control the, the entrance to the park. It, it's, it's just a matter of way how you communicate it with the public. Uh, with our experience, most people would like to pay some kind of donation to the park. Uh, if, you, if you make it a policy, and if you, if the price is right, I should I, I don't think that you will have a big negative impact. Okay, Marno, thank you very much. Um, thank you, Marno. Yes, and we have a lot of other questions, so we are trying to address them in the chat directly because we don't have more time for this round of questions, and we need to we need to move to the to the next. Uh, to the next uh, mecha financing mechanism, but we will maybe have time at the end to address other questions or at least to try and address them in the, in the chat. So next slide, okay. So now we will move to the last mechanism, uh, which is not properly said a self-financing mechanism. It is an innovative mechanism that has been uh, implemented first in Morocco, in the city Alosema by the Association Agir and uh, its founder and president, uh, Usin Nibani, will introduce you to this case study just after my quick presentation. So basically, what is a revolving fund? What's the concept behind it? In this case, uh, in what we introduce in the guide and in what uh, Usin Nibani and Agir developed, uh, it is a fund that is dedicated to the transformation of small scale fisheries uh, in and around MPAs to our more sustainable practices. So we focused mainly in this approach on uh, fisheries, but on the long term, uh, it's not impossible that we could find uh, other use and other activities to finance through this kind of approach. But for the moment, it's mainly based on a transformation of small scale fisheries. So the idea is pretty simple. Uh, you get a grant or you get, uh, you have an initial fund uh, from your own capital or from a donor or uh, any kind of investment. And instead of uh, using the money once for a one-shot project over two or three years, and then at the end of it, the money is gone and the project is over, you will ask to the beneficiaries, here the fishermen, to reimburse the money uh, of the grants, uh, which is the revolving aspect of the, of the fund. And then when the money came back entirely to the fund, you can finance another set of, uh, of conservation activities related to fisheries and so on. So the idea is with the same initial uh, inv capital investment, instead of, uh, of, of financing only one project, you will be able to use the same initial investment over and over again, over a longer period of time. So this is the principle and I let uh, Usin talk about it a little bit later. So uh, if you are an MPA, why would you be needed uh, this kind of financing mechanism? Uh, this financing mechanism is a good opportunity for you uh, if you are willing to reduce fishing impact in uh, your MPAs or around. Uh, it's also good if you want to enhance, if you have an objective of enhancing economic and social empowerment of local fishermen through uh, a secured income, through development of uh, alternative livelihoods for their families, for example. And also if you are an MPA that is willing to work on enhancing uh, political decisions towards 
more uh, conservation activities by involving the local fisheries and the local communities. But even if you are willing to implement this kind of financing mechanism, there are some prerequisites that you need to have in your MPA to, to move forward with, with this financing mechanism mm -hmm. and, to, and to implement it. Uh, of course, you need to have fisheries in your MPA, small scale fisheries. You need also to have uh, upgradable fishing practices, which means if you are, if you are uh, in a perfect MPA and all the small scale fishermen in your MPA are having sustainable and totally environmental friendly activities, maybe uh, there are not much things you can improve in terms of fishing practices, but I'm not sure that's the case. And finally, uh, you need to have a trustful relationship, of course, with your fishing communities. Usin also will talk about that. Or at least, if you don't have a trustful relationship yet, you need to be willing to enter a long process of, uh, of developing a trustful relationship with the fishing communities. Uh, what about the process? So the process we designed uh, from the very beginning to the implementation, the actual implementation of the, of the revolving fund is made of eight steps. Um, so you will find in the guide different, uh, different tips about how to implement all of those steps because we know that uh, it's often complicated to start a mechanism like that because we don't know uh, where to start where to start and someone uh, we are keen on uh, giving up before starting so uh, the idea of the guide is to really show you step by step what to do when to do it what kind of uh, people involved what kind of partnership uh, develop and just to show you a quick quick example of all the, the tips and the advices you could find in the guide. Uh, for example, when you will enter the process of developing a revolving fund for, your, uh, for sustainable fisheries in your MPA, you will have a lot of issues and a lot of questions. For example, uh, you will have to deal with a lot of uh, legal aspects. So the guide is providing you tips on legal aspects. You will also need to, to involve uh, actively all the fishermen at all steps of the processes. So the guide is giving you advices on how to make sure to involve the fishermen at all steps. Uh, and finally, of course, you will need to design the blueprint, the financial framework of the mechanism itself. Uh, you will need to you will need to work on uh, the reimbursement scheme you want to develop with the with the fishermen. You will need to work maybe uh, on a partnership with a local bank to welcome the fund uh, in the bank. You will also have some uh, management fees maybe to cover, so you will need to, to think about how to cover them. And the guide is providing you tips about all of, all of these points. Uh, but I've already talked too much, so I'm going to leave the floor to Usin Nibani from Agir. Um, and before starting, I really want to thank him uh, for the work we have done together for the past two years, because he's the one with his, with his association that developed the revolving fund, and he was really he welcomed us uh, at Alosema, and we work really well together on uh, the key elements of the revolving fund uh, to make sure that we can replicate it elsewhere. And I really wanted to take this opportunity to thank you, Busi. So thank you, and the, the floor is yours. Thank you very much, uh, Guillaume. Uh, so uh, for me, it's a real uh, pleasure to, to uh, share our experience and to communicate about it. Uh, so uh, uh, I go directly to the subjects. The running, running, uh, running fund mechanism, which is a kind of uh, inclu inclusive lever for the implementation of the al National Park. Uh, as uh, you see, really, there is a, a very, very high uh, uh, number of uh, species. The, this ecosystem is really uh, um, very, even for us, is uh, like this, the first time we see it, like we see it every day. So, uh, however, as the local communities doesn't take advantage of this uh, of these uh, resources so uh, in fact uh, i'm trying to have uh, okay so um, i 
I give you the geographical location of the national park, which is in the middle uh, of the Mediterranean side of uh, Morocco. Uh, it's uh, it's uh, the biggest one in Morocco with, uh, uh, at the same time, terrestrial uh, zone and uh, marine zone uh, with more than uh, 48,000 hectares and uh, on the on the marine side uh, 19600 uh, meters uh, of uh, sorry hectares uh, the pro the idea of the project is uh, uh, is a little bit old uh, the project idea was born in 2008 uh, as a contribution to the national program for indication of drift net, which has a, a big impact in uh, bycatch. Uh, thanks to this project, the Arhesima Harbor was, was the most adapted to this process in, uh, in Morocco. Uh, so, sorry. So, the, but because the goal before the uh, economic goal, the, the goal of the initiative uh, was the restoration of ecosystem and the biodiversity restoration of the national uh, park or marine zone and uh, resources. Uh, this kind of approach has a real inclusive strategy involving uh, local actors. Uh, at the same time, uh, it uh, helps to fight against un unsustainable fishing methods uh, since uh, we are supporting the environmental management autonomy. We are supporting the financial management also autonomy for local people. Uh, and we are in trying to imp implement the integral zone of uh, the Al Husayma Marine Park, since that we have two, two hand, two thousand hectares of no-go zone, that is still not functioning. Uh, the, uh, the the importance of uh, uh, partnership framework is very very important, See, and uh, we have been. Uh, able to create a real common management uh, between uh, uh, Ajir and uh, the, the water and forests at the regional level and also at the central level, level. We have been able to implicate uh, the local university uh, with this uh, uh, coastal master uh, we are we had been able to implicate the institution of uh, uh, technology of fish fishing and we uh, more in interesting for this project we have been able to implicate the office office uh, office of uh, fish uh, national fish with uh, we will play a, a real important uh, role in this uh, mechanism so uh, the, we are, as I said, we are really supporting the environmental um, local management uh, autonomy uh, with this project of the supporting of no take zone. The idea is to implement the no go zone. Uh, and uh, uh, in, in fact, we are trying to, to do to solve this problem of interaction of artisanal fishing, which is, which is a, a sustainable activity uh, against the uh, illegal uh, activities using uh, uh, sustainable fishing gears that will be produced by a cooperative of uh, uh, fisher uh, fisher uh, uh, of fisherwomen. 
uh, and the goal is uh, protecting the, and the restoration of habitats, coralligenous and degraded meadows, thanks to the sustainable fishing gear. Uh, we, we have been able to organize fisher, uh, fisher women in a cooperative that has been uh, reinforced with this fence. So the mechanism uh, uh, is very simple, uh, but it's very efficient. Since uh, we are helping women to be autonomous economically, but women will help us to, to protect the area since that fishing gears will be put inside uh, the, the no go zone. And then the, the activity, for example, of trawling cannot be since they will destroy these fishing gears. So uh, we are protecting the, uh, the no-go zone with the fishing, fishing gears, uh, biodegradable fishing gears, sustainable fishing gears. So this is uh, the, uh, the uh, the, the middle of uh, the most important uh, thing in this project. So, uh, and uh, uh, the mechanism, uh, we are not genius. We have just listened to propositions of fishermen because they don't want that someone take money and then cannot bring it back. So they gave us the mechanism. So the game, it's not uh, uh, our own mechanism. The mechanism is coming from the field. So we have uh, uh, begun before MAVA fund, uh, include uh, UNDP uh, fund. Now, we, uh, thanks to MAVA, we have a bigger fence. And uh, the grants is, uh, uh, so we, uh, we are, for example, buying materials for fishing gears transformation, and then uh, we we pay. We are the buyer to protect the products because we have more economic resilience with this fence, and then we sell. We sell to the fishermen the products and in this way we are influencing them to use sustainable fishing gears and then we we can have money back from the fish markets since that we have a convention with office national of the fish who uh, with uh, we have uh, each uh, Fishermen uh, will uh, reimburse five percent of his uh, uh, fishing uh, parts, fishing parts that uh, uh, what he has sold in the market. In this case, uh, we uh, if it's very uh, for us is a kind of uh, uh, human being coming from ecosystemic service so when he we when the fisherman uh, had good captures he can pay back 500 5% of what he has sold if he doesn't if he has no no activity he don't pay so and uh, he we he has no there is no uh, persons for Agir, we don't take advantage any aid. It's a zero percent of uh, interest. For Usin, us. Usin, it's 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 really interesting, but I just want to remind you the time, and we have some question at the end, and it's almost the end. So okay. if you can, so I, I, I really, be quick, thank you. I really nearly finished. So uh, uh, so in this case, we uh, now we are uh, scaling up the mechanism since that we have more women and more 
new cooperative that are trained by, by the initial cooperative with NAS. So in this way, we can uh, have a, re a real response to the markets. And uh, uh, we have good news since that we have uh, yet one and a half time of uh, re reimbursement. So with this uh, concrete uh, exa example, we have involved more people in uh, this, uh, this mechanism. And now we are looking for other champs like uh, here, Pesca Tourism. And uh, uh, of course, uh, it's, uh, it's, uh, it's, uh, all people, we have really created a local demand for these uh, objects. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Hussein. It was really interesting, and I'm sure we could discuss about about this mechanism for a long time. But uh, maybe we will have five. Uh, well, first of all, I want to say to all participants that sorry about the camera of Hussein. You can you can you can see you can see his face, but he has some issue with his camera. Uh, and now we will have five minutes, maybe two questions maximum, Nastasia, because we don't have time. Yes. And then Thomas Binet, the founder of Blue Seeds, will give you will give you some 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 conclusion of the of the webinar thank you very much thank you very much guillaume and usin for your presentation so we have a few questions about about this last mechanism um the first one being so most of the time do fishers really are there to this mechanism yeah, usin yeah. maybe yes for for us for us we are trying now uh, in fact uh, we are uh, we're trying to have more fine uh, system uh, to to choose who are uh, we have really big demand. This is why we had developed up, try, uh, us upscaled the mechanism, and we have now more uh, choice for choosing the most responsible fishers. And also, and also, seen it was, uh, as you as you mentioned to us before, it was a long process for for the association to work with the fishermen, and it it it, it, it has taken you many many years to to develop this trustful relationship with the with the fishermen. But now, uh, first they were doubting, but you managed to convince them, and now they are really into this process of of transformation towards towards sustainability. Correct. Yes, in fact, uh, I forget to say that now we are we are involving the Institute of Technology the, the, uh, of Fishing, and we have made NAS also as uh, uh, not only uh, producing, but, but teaching other women. And now we have another institute in the, in Nador, Nador in the, another uh, city in the Mediterranean. And we are trying to 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 do a, a second example in the Mediterranean side, but also a third example in the Atlantic side. Yeah, because this is this is also one important point that shows the interest from from fishermen for this for this kind of mechanism is that, uh, if I'm correct, you had some requests from other cooperatives in the country to to be involved in such in such mechanism, right? Yes, since that the mechanism is very soft and we are protecting uh, them because at the, uh, at the second time, the, the fence uh, uh, is, a, is a kind of resi economic resilient uh, system. It helps people to be implicated in this fence without uh, a real uh, problems if he has gone to find funds from the bank. Yes, okay, good. Uh, okay. Maybe one- Thank you very much. Yes, just one okay. last question because the time is running. Um, so how, um, what are the results on Fisher's community in terms of incomes, for example, or uh, in terms of conflicts between practices and uh, traditions? So for me, for me is, uh, is uh, we are uh, starting uh, uh, a biocultural uh, aspects and uh, 
uh, we are uh, now we have if I, I didn't want to charge the, the presentation but if we compare the traveling activity now in the national park is very is very low uh, next to other parts in Morocco so we have a real uh, because the most important uh, for for example on in NGOs conservators NGOs maybe can do the best of, but if people are not involved, local people are not involved between themselves and dealing with the real problems, if not, so the, this is a, this uh, project is a kind of filigram uh, to solve local problematic since, since uh, uh, without uh, without uh, too much implication for conservators, because uh, uh, we cannot be heard all the time. Well, thank you very much, Houston, for your for your answers and for your presentation. Uh, I think we're going to wrap up and, and conclude. So, Thomas, if you if you want to to say a few words. Thanks, Guillaume. Um, hello, everybody. Can you hear me? Yes. Yes. Okay, thank you. Um, thanks a lot. I was just very busy trying to read all the questions, uh, being on the chat, uh, question and answer. So I was, uh, I think uh, I'm very happy that there is a lot of interest about this question. And uh, I think it's an unsolved issues, uh, this question of financing mechanism. And we definitely need to uh, uh, progress and build on those to, uh, and go on working on this. But uh, thanks to all the panelists and the participants for taking part to this webinar. I think it's been a, a success and we, we are very um, surprised to see all this interest in this subject. And but we definitely convinced that it's uh, a key subject to, to deal with. Uh, this question of self-financing mechanism is, uh, is key to uh, better effectiveness of marine protected areas, impact and sustainability, definitely. Uh, we. Well, I also think that it's not the only solution. It's not the, the it's not a miraculous solution in most cases. Uh, we've seen that there are questions about legal aspects. We think that there are questions about acceptability, about uh, how to how feasible it is in your MPA. So I think still there is a lot to be done about this uh, about this subject in terms of lobbying to uh, change the national jurisdiction, but also in terms of designing. And I do hope that uh, in the guide that we published today, you'll find some uh, key answers to those, uh, to those questions and trying to make uh, some progress about those, uh, about those mechanism that we presented, briefly presented today. So uh, I just wanted to talk, about, to talk a little bit about Blue Seeds. Um, we are a very young team. Um, and um, I really thanks the Blue Seeds team for organizing and, and taking um, presenting today. And we've got a, the full team behind at the backstage <laughs> trying to answer the question as well. So thanks a lot. Very proud of you. <laughs> um, just a few words about Blue Seeds. Uh, we are building tools to support conservation managers in achieving effective uh, conservation. That's our um, mission, that's our vision as well, that uh, managers need tools and needs uh, assistance in order to be able to uh, deliver impact and sustainability. And sustainable impact is, is very important as well. We don't want this kind of wave effect trying to bring impact and then um, uh, decrease it or, or, or phase it down. Uh, just uh, wanted to tell you that we have the objective in the coming months and coming years to launch uh, kind of a large scale mechanism in order to uh, bring financing to the upfront of the MPA issues and, uh, and, uh, and be more impactful and uh, sustainable in the way conservation is done. And to do so, we are working on specific packages that, in, that encapsulate um, training, any tool that is useful for MPA managers. So this is something that we are in the process of designing, thanks to the support of MAVA projects. And um, uh, we're really happy and really convinced that this may do the difference in the way uh, MPA managers do 
the, do their job and trying to be uh, more impactful in what they're doing. So this is something that we are working on. And uh, in this process, I just wanted also to tell you that uh, in the coming weeks, we will launch um, a call for MPAs in order to um, be some kind of a lab, in order to test and design our packages to, uh, to those financing mechanism that we developed and, um, and presented today, and namely the concession fees and the entrance fees as, um, as a primary step. So uh, uh, stay tuned and, uh, and um, download the, the guide so that we can have your email and just uh, communicate about what we are doing in the coming months. I think there is, since there is all this interest, I think it's, um, uh, it's important and it's key if we can uh, share some information with you and, and possibly you can, um, you can be part of this experimentation and design of those uh, packages and those solutions that we are developing. So um, again, thanks to all uh, for this participation. It was a great pleasure to, to have you and to see some, some of the faces <laughs> that, uh, that I'm missing a lot. And, um, and uh, I give you the, the floor to you back, uh, Guillaume. Yes, but I'm, I'm, I'm not sure we are, I am the faces you are missing, which you're talking about, but thank you for your, thank <laughs> you for your conclusion. <laughs> uh, yeah, and just to, just to, to conclude on what Thomas said, uh, we shared again on the, on the chat session, the, the link to download the, to download the guide. So don't hesitate and share it with your network and, uh, we want it to be useful and we don't want it to 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 go into into your library and not be used so we hope it's going to be useful and if you have any question about it any any step of the process um, you can you can you can you can send us email you can contact us you will find our contact uh, in the blue seed website uh, the, the, the webinar will stay a little bit uh, open after the end because um, some of you ask to get access to all the questions. So we will give you some time to collect the question and see what are the answers if you want. Uh, yeah, I, I take the opportunity to, to thank all the participants once again and all the, the speakers, uh, Marina, Pierre, Sue, uh, Romain, uh, Sandro and Marno, uh, and also Usin. It was really great to have you with us, and I hope you will continue to, to, to keep up the good work together. And as Thomas said, uh, this guide is just the first step. The next step is obviously to try and develop and implement uh, some, some financing solution to, to reduce your financing gap and to help you to be more resilient. So we, I hope we will have the opportunity to work with you uh, in the future. Um, and I also want, of course, to thanks the to thanks Marco, the, the, the technical assistant who organized the, the webinar, uh, and also the, the the two translators. Thank you very much. I didn't have the opportunity to 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 hear you talking in French, but uh, I hope our English wasn't too complicated to translate. Uh, thank you very much, and uh, and I think that's it. And also, of course, thank you once again to Metpon who organize the webinar with us. Uh, it was really good to have uh, you on board with us and to to be able to, to, to spread the word to your big network of MPA. So thank you very much for that. Um, and I think that's it at my side. I don't know if anybody else, had, uh, Nastasia or Toma, you want to add something or else I think uh, we, we, we can put an end to this webinar. Just thank you very much, everyone. And as Guillaume said, uh, we really, we really hope that this guide will, will help you to implement some financing mechanisms. Yes, yeah, sorry, Nastasia, I didn't even thank you because it was obvious for me. But uh, she is the one who, who wrote the guide, so <laughs> she wrote it for you. And she's she's she, she's in the room. No, next. it's a teamwork. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't say thanks, but sorry. Thank you very much, Nastasia. Thank you, thank you, everyone. <laughs> Thank you, everyone. Bye -bye. And we try, yeah, we try to answer all the questions, so you can you can take a look at the questions uh, at the end of the webinar. Thank you very much, everybody. Bye, ciao. Thank you. Bye. bye. Thank you. Thank you. All. Thank you very much. Hasta luego.